Hey, hi, kids. It's Mr. Larry, and I've got some more about aha, the solar system. Awesome book of planets and their moons. And we've been going through, we've gotten the, the inner planets, I guess you'd say. And now it's time for a couple of the big guys. Yeah. Jupiter, the biggest of all. Saturn, hey, not bad. We may get even further than that today because there's more planets out there. More moons, too. But for right now, what do you say? Are you ready to read? You want to learn about Jupiter? Maybe you already know about Jupiter. I'm learning stuff all the time. Wow. Well, let's take a look. Let's go. Let's read. Well, I'll start with this yellow bar up across the top. Jupiter's huge gravity squeezes to make it hot and glowing. Whoa. Have you ever been squeezed so hard it made you hot and glowing? I haven't, but it looks like that's what's happening to poor old Jupiter. Hmm. Huge gravity, hot and glowing. Big planet, Jupiter. Jupiter is gigantic. It is by far the biggest planet in the solar system, over 88,000 miles, that's 141,622 kilometers, in case you're scientific, 88,000 miles across. What is that? A little less than four times as big as us across on Earth? Wow. Anyway, it takes 12 years to go around the sun. Goodness, it is, it is an enormous ball of gas, more like the sun than like the earth, and it is made mainly of hydrogen and helium. Who did thunk it? Gases. You can see it clearly for part of the year. It is brighter than any of the stars. Yeah, it's not a star, it's a planet, but it's brighter than any star. Wow. Well, here's a question. Question, what is the red spot? Oh, look, there's a picture of it. Mm -hmm. The great red spot, or GRS, is a dark red swirl of clouds in Jupiter's atmosphere. It was first noticed more than 300 years ago. It seems to be a gigantic hurricane with very strong winds. Jupiter is a very different place, very different from Earth, isn't it? All gas and with a storm that turns everything red and has lasted at least 300 years. Oh, goodness. My brain hurts thinking about that. Mm -hmm. What's the black star say? Can you find the great red spot? Well, of course, we're going to find the great red spot. It's right down there. We just talked about it. I think they're being silly with us. What do you think? But I will tell you this, I have never seen the great red spot by looking at that star-like planet in the night sky. Maybe if I got to go to an observatory or I had a friend with a telescope, sometimes you can even see special things about the planets with binoculars. That's something to think about. Ask the big folks, hey, anybody around here got a pair of binoculars we can go out and look at some planets with? Whew could do a lot of good stuff with that. Amazing stuff at night. Wow. Well, back to the book. Up at the top on the right, Jupiter weighs 318 times as much as Earth. Wow. Its colorful clouds are whipped into long belts by violent storms up to 300 miles per hour. Or violent winds, violent winds, that's what it is. The winds are up to 300 miles an hour. Oh, my goodness. That's 483 kilometers per hour, in case you want to do it that way. Goodness gracious. And I think the picture right beside that text shows how big Jupiter is compared to our planet Earth. My golly. Oh, and there's the red spot again over on Jupiter. Hmm. We don't have anything like that here on Earth. Gee. Well, what's this? Jupiter's gravity is so powerful 
that it squeezes hydrogen and helium gases until they become liquid or solid. Under the thin atmosphere is an ocean of liquid hydrogen and a small rocky core. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine squeezing a gas until it becomes liquid or solid? Wow. Gee, that's just hard, hard to comprehend. But that's what's happening. Golly. What does it say down here in our little diamond yellow box? Awesome facts. Oh, ho. Jupiter revolves once in 10 Earth hours compared to 24 hours for Earth. Jupiter's equator is revolving at, oh my goodness, 30,000 miles per hour. Oh, by the way, that's 48,283 kilometers per hour. Wow. Things were a bit different on Jupiter, aren't they? Oh my goodness. And there's lots more to find out about Jupiter. Use your computer, use your libraries, use your own books. So much to think about. Wow. Well, who do you think? What planet will be next? Let's find out. Oh, it's not a planet. It's Jupiter's moons. Jupiter has moons. Would you look at that? It has, Jupiter has at least 16 moons. Oh my golly. Well, let's go back and read the yellow bar. <clears throat> Callisto's Valhalla crater is so dark, it makes the moon look like a giant eyeball. Wow. Hmm. I did not know that. And I find it somewhat hard to believe, but maybe I can borrow some binoculars and go look. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, the pronunciations Callisto, Valhalla, when people name things in the sky, stars, planets, asteroids, meteorites, yeah. They get to choose names for them. And in this case, they've chosen names from ancient times, from mythology. You can do some research on that, too, on the computer or in the library. Hmm, interesting stuff. Check it out. But let's read. Jupiter's moons. Hmm. Jupiter has at least 16 moons. What do they mean by that? At least 16? Do they mean they haven't really counted? Maybe some things might count as moons to some people or not to others. Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. But anyway, the four largest moons, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, were discovered by the scientist Galileo Galilei in the year 1610. Hmm. Ganymede and Callisto are larger than our own moon, and the other two are not much smaller. Hmm, pretty good, respectable moons there. Yeah. And again, names from ancient times. Well, we'll go on and read. Until Galileo saw through his telescope that Jupiter's moons circled around it, people thought that everything in the universe circled around our Earth. Uh-oh. Hmm. That caused some problems. Mm-hmm. It's hard to change your mind when you've been the center of everything forever, and all of a sudden somebody says, you're not the center of everything. Hmm. Caused some problems. Check that one out in the library. Mm -hmm. But let's see what is down here. Oh, for one thing, we have the names of the moons printed on them in the picture. So there's Jupiter, the big planet, and then there's Ganymede, the moon, and then there's Eo. Look how big Eo is. My goodness. And then Callisto, and then there's Europa. Wow. Hmm, hmm, hmm. How about that? Wow. Well, down here, in very small print, way over on the left side, if you were on Ganymede, you would see Jupiter in the sky. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense, doesn't it? Wow, what's our awesome fact for the day? Awesome facts. Jupiter has 16 known moons. Maybe there's some out there to be discovered. There's a job for you. Get on it, would you? But there may be others too small to have been seen yet. You can see the four biggest moons 
with an ordinary pair of binoculars. There's some homework for you. Hmm? If you know somebody with binoculars, or if you have binoculars of your own, then all you have to do is figure out where Jupiter will be in the sky on a clear night. And it changes every night where it'll be and every hour during the night too. But there are ways to find that out. And people can help you with that. And you can go out and see the moons of Jupiter with binoculars. Wow. I want to do that. Jeez. Well, let's look up here. Let's zoom in on Europa's oceans. Yeah, wait a minute. Oceans? Oceans on moons? <clears> hmm. <throat> well, let's see. Europa has a very bright, smooth surface of ice, possibly with liquid water beneath it. Whew. Scientists think that there might be life forms in this water. Oh, my goodness. In places, the surface of Europa is cracked like an eggshell. Oh, my. That's a really big thought to think about, isn't it? A moon of a faraway planet that has liquid water on it and ice all over the top of the water. And I think we remember from a previous page that water is what supports life. Do you think there might be life in the water on that moon of the planet Jupiter? Oh, my. There's going to be so much for you to think about in all the coming years. Maybe by the time you're as old as I am, they'll actually know what's under that ice. Maybe they'll say, oh, look at this. We got a new life for him. Oh, wow. Gee. Well, let's read some more. Io has been called the most volcanic body in the solar system. When the Voyager 2 space probe passed it in 1979, it discovered that plumes of material were being shot out from Eel's surface up to a height of nearly 200 miles, 322 kilometers. It was the first evidence of active volcanoes anywhere other than Earth. Wow. Mm -hmm -hmm. Volcano, volcanoes on Eel. What do you know about that? Well, where do you think we'll go next? You ready? Want to make a guess? Is there a planet out there that waiting for us to visit? Let's take a look. Well, hey, here's Saturn. I'll bet you know all about Saturn, don't you? The planet with the rings. Look at that. Wow. Ooh. Well, let's look up here in the yellow bar. Saturn is so light that it would float in a giant bathtub of water. My goodness. There's a thought for you. How big of a bathtub would you have to have to float a planet on it? Not only any planet, but one that's many times bigger than Earth. Mm. And then another thought, a planet so light it would float in water? Oh, boy. Let's read more. Saturn. Saturn is the second largest planet. A gas giant. A gas giant over 74,000 miles across. 119,091 kilometers. Saturn is known as the ringed planet because around it circles amazing rings stretching out 43,000 miles, 69,202 kilometers. Saturn's core is made of rock twice as hot as the sun's surface. Can you even imagine that? I'm having a hard time imagining that. Whew. Boy, scientists sure figure out some interesting things. Oh, my goodness. Huh. Well, back to the reading. Question. What are Saturn's rings made of? Answer. Saturn's rings are bands of countless billions of tiny blocks of ice and dust. Ice and dust? Who'd have thunk it? And they circle the planet endlessly. Each ring is thousands of miles wide. 
sometimes bigger than the whole United States going across it. Wow. Ice and dust, thousands of miles wide. Goodness. Well, how about an awesome fact? Let's see. When Galileo first discovered Saturn's rings in 1610, he thought the planet had ears. Okay. Or handles. Because his telescope, his telescope wasn't sharp enough. Mm. Yeah, I can understand that. With my glasses on or off, I see things funny. So he thought that Saturn either had ears or handles. Okay, now we know. We got sharp telescopes. And we see Saturn at different angles at different times. So we can see Saturn's rings better at some times than others. Yeah. In 1995, the rings were edge on and hard to see. In 2005, they were at a greater angle, which gave us a clear view. See how it all is there with a nice pointer going up and down the cursor? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. So we can think ahead on that. If we say that's like a 10-year cycle, add 10 onto that, maybe 2022 looks like 2011. Maybe not. Maybe we could do some math and find out. Maybe we could check online. Maybe we could find a book in the library. And maybe we know somebody that just happens to know this sort of thing because they're interested in astronomy, the planets, the stars, the universe, and everything. Could be. I know people like that, and I'm glad I do. Wow. There's so much, so much to think about here. I think I'll stop reading now, and that'll leave a couple of planets to think about later. Um, also, next time there'll be a glossary, and maybe you've been using a dictionary if you needed to, and maybe not, but um, let's leave it for now and come back another time and read more about the awesome books of planets and their moons. So much to think about. But for right now, I'm thinking about going outside to play in the snow. Do you have snow where you live? Or maybe you're reading it sometime when there isn't any snow. This is recorded for use online, but I have fresh snow this morning. It snowed all night and it has just stopped. I'm not gonna go too far because I just had an operation on my knee, but I'm gonna go out and get in the snow. And if you've got snow, I think you should too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get messy, whatever you do. Work hard, study hard, play hard, have a great day, and come back and see me again, and we'll read some more. Peace and love, kids. Happy times. Bye-bye.